What up, what up, what up, it's your boy Dave B, you watching Dave B on TV, where we go beyond the everyday bullshit that people be consuming on a day-to-day basis, and today, I'm replying to comments again, I got my boy, I believe, you Nye, if I said that wrong, my bad, homie, I'm gonna put him down in the, in the description, probably along with the question, but he was asking about the North Node, he was asking about the part of Fortune, um, kind of like the meaning, so this video gonna be about the meaning of part of Fortune's, and um, he asked its relevancy or, you know, is it similar to the North Node? So we're going to break that down and then we're going to talk about the second part to his question, which was, uh, I believe, uh, dang, what was it? The second part of the question was something like, um, oh, asking about the relevancy, importance of it. And also, I believe he was talking about the moon versus like Pluto as far as like what's more influential. Um, so let's start with the part of fortune. So part of fortune represents, it's a hypothetical point that's calculated between your sun, moon and rising. And it's basically an idea towards what energy you would have worldly success with. Um, so when you look at what element it's in, that's the type of energy it is. So if you have a part of fortune in like air, like I have a part of fortune in Gemini, for instance. So when it comes to air, it's communication, of course, writing, thinking, exchange of ideas. Um, if it's in fire, it's some form of expression or creativity or the act of separation. Um, when it's in water, it's about connection, um, being in a feeling, understanding other people's feelings. Um, and then when it's in earth, it's about practicality, of course, and making sense out of things, building things, staying sturdy and knowing, uh, being knowledgeable about functionality of things. Um, so when you look at, you know, when it comes to the world, like I said, I, I like to break down everything into kind of three experiences we're having, right? We're having a spiritual experience that's beyond this body, right? That's what created this body then you have a human experience which is you in this body making actions um making actions you know what I'm saying your family your blood who you connect with who you experience you know what I'm saying all the things that come with being a human or in a human body and then last but not least is the world uh physical experience that we're having which is the system that we live in society culture things like that so it's like three different layers that's going on right so on a spiritual level um it doesn't matter what you actually do so if you have say you want to be a rapper and th this is important too i'm going to bring back this series shout out to um i think it was kev on the track and he was saying that you know one of my first videos was why musicians and artists and rappers should know astrology and the benefits of knowing your, your astrology so you can kind of customize your career in a certain way or structure your career in a way where you know it's not like you're always going to be in your comfort zone but you'll at least be in your energy and whenever you do anything in your energy it comes out 10 times more successful and with a lot less stress and um, regret than when you do things outside of your energy you know what i'm saying you're not if you a water sign but you you didn't know that so you got yourself in a situation where you surrounded yourself or put yourself in a position where you have to do a lot of communicating that's going to feel real awkward to you where you could have set your situation up where you have private meetings with individuals you trust that can go and do the negotiating for you. You know what I'm saying? Just different things that, again, it's not about trying to stay in your comfort zone, but it's learning how to position yourself and set things up around you in a beneficial way for you to get where you need to go in the most efficient way possible. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that's all we need. Now, when we get into uh, so c to continue in the point, so depending on what it is. So f first and foremost, I like to tell people, especially during my consultations, when it comes to the gift and talent that you have, start with that first. Start with what you love to do. Start with what you enjoy. Then what you do from what you naturally do, because you got to think in concept, you know, we're talking about a career, right? So a career to a lot of people, it just looks like something to do to make money and get rich and whatever. But really, um, a career, a true career is the difference between a career and a job. Shout out to my parents because they told me they taught me this as a, at a young age. 
difference between a career and a job is a job is just some 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 bullshit you go to every day to get a check. A career is something that you would you already were going to do regardless if you was getting paid for it or not. That a lot of times is the way more lucrative path than just the thing that's going to get you the quick dollar up front that's that's more correlated with desires and just getting a quick buck but sometimes you need that sometimes it's necessary sometimes you got to do that night shift at fedex in order for you to get to a position where you could do the thing you love more frequently and you know what i'm saying so it's all a balance and we all in different scenarios and situations so it's not even to look at yourself like you're doing something wrong because you're working at a, a warehouse or you're working at um you know some kind of retail job or at a restaurant waiting tables at a hotel whatever it is you know again that's just part of your physical experience some bullshit you're doing in the world so that you can function within the society without being too out of whack but we always have to honor our spirit first so wherever it is that your true spirit wants to do again don't stress so much of trying to jump to that where it destroys your physical life find some kind of balance where you can do something that can get you paid and pay or at least pay the bills and you know, you can, you have to, and then again, whatever that is, you have to create time to practice or put in, the, you have to create time to do what you love, you know, and that's just how this world is. You have to make time for what you love. And what happens is God sees that and the universe reacts to that and you co-create with the universe at that end because what's going to happen is based upon the feelings that you accumulate when you're doing what you love, if you truly Use that feeling right to in, to to increase the energy and importance of your ritual because your ritual is whatever you do with your body. So look at your schedule today. And say you're a person who ain't really into this, but you're trying to figure it out, right? So you spend way way too much time at your job because you need to in order to pay the bills. But you spend way too much on your job, and you would like to spend a lot more time doing what you love to do. And let's just for the sake of this analogy or this example, let's call it painting. You just love to paint, but you have this job, and you're like, damn, how do I create this balance? It's like first of all, you're gonna have to do the groundwork. Shit ain't easy. So when you see your part of fortune, don't think, oh. Shit shit, I just do this, and then all of a sudden, I'm going to be rich, this is a fucking journey, bro, this is a journey, so you're going to have to endure, and be, again, when, when I say tested, it's not like the universe putting a test on you, it's just, when you're, when you feel like you're being tested, true test, what it really is, is you reminding yourself that you can do anything, it's you reminding yourself of all possibilities, aka tapping into your own God power, it's you realizing, oh, shit, anything is possible for me if I choose this. Like, if I choose this, I can I can manifest anything I need to or I can access all possibilities. I, I might not have the exact replica in my mind, the simulation of what it's going to be, but I can create an idea and that idea can carry me to something that might just be better. And that's the whole idea concept of leaving your plans a little open, not being so rigid in what you want to manifest because again it's not about that you might see a lot of things in the physical and create a dream for yourself in which you're like yo success looks like this to me but it's always going to look different in reality because like i was saying in that video talking about psychology simulation simulation our brains can only our brains are limited our minds are limited we can only create a simulacra which is something that is closely could be closely related to a possibility that could come true but it's not the exact thing that's going to come so don't put yourself in a situation where you create too many dreams and ideas that hold you back aka you're so clinged on to something coming in a specific way that you miss out on something that is either equally or more beneficial for you that or even if it's something that doesn't seem like it's beneficial, a lot of times we receive shit that we have to go through in order to have what it takes to sustain success. So you have to consider that, too. You not getting that million dollars when you really thought you had a good idea. You, maybe you wasn't ready for that shit yet. And you have to be able to, um, you know, remain modest and see the value in 
failure see the value in not getting what you thought you wanted because again you only going to get what you deserve anyway so it was never about what you wanted it was never about what you needed need is looking at things like the world owe you something the world don't owe you shit so just because you see that little part of fortune the world don't owe you shit you got to make this shit real for you and that's got to look however it looks and you have to at some point find gratitude and acceptance in whatever it is that does manifest you feel me so, sorry y'all Sorry <laughs> But for the most part, we're gonna keep it focused So for the most part, how you gotta look at things, right? When it comes to the part of fortune Is that, um, this is where your worldly success is So kind of what I was saying, look at the spirit first The spirit gonna tell you where, what direction to kind of lean in What you wanna aim for, right? So what you wanna aim for and how you want to position yourself It's like, okay, like I said Air, water, fire, earth Depending on what sign you have these energies in That's the space you want to put yourself in Or the type of vibes that you want to um, uh, embody that, that you have to practice And um, in his comment, you know, I said You know, his it, what he found on the internet was that Oh, it, they, a lot of descriptions say basically you are uh, struggle with the energy early on in life and then you learn how to uh, get a grip of the energy and utilize it for your benefit. So basically, that's like anything in life. You know what I'm saying? The part of fortune is placed in a way where, like I said, it's a calculation an intersection between your sun, moon and rising. So based upon those energies is going to, you know, give you a hypothetical point where, OK, this is going to be an energy that you may not be the strongest in, but you're going to have to participate in in order to get what it takes to get to that space you know in order to get where you need to go or again in that challenge in wherever that that energy is again it, it makes sense why it would be an energy that you are not so great at at the beginning but you go through the experience of learning that energy and it becomes something that you could actually get lucky in Boom, strike gold with. So it starts with understanding your energy. So depending on how your sun, moon, well, first of all, when you look at your part of fortune, what's really important is to understand the sign and find the house lord. So the house lord of a sign and say you have, uh, for instance, example, my part of fortune is in Gemini, 27 degrees. So what I would do is I would look at Gemini and I would say, OK, um, what I need to do is. Uh, where's Mercury? Because that's the ruler. So the house lord is basically looking at the sign of a house and looking at the ruler and saying, okay, where is this ruler at? My Mercury is in, uh, or the, the ruler of Gemini, right? My part of fortune is in Gemini. Gemini, the planet that rules it is Mercury. Mercury is located in my third house. So that means that I can use my third house in the energy that's placed there in order to, um, First of all, manifest more situations for me to have opportunities to do my part of fortune and also utilize it to like figure out how to go about doing my part of fortune because the part of fortune could be in a space where you don't have many other energies that you can use. Sometimes your part of fortune is conjunct certain planets and you can utilize those planets to create some kind of force to be like, okay, if I got other planets that's trying and or conjunct my part of fortune, those are the ways in which I need to go about um, doing whatever I love to do, but utilizing that part of fortune energy. So for instance, you want to paint, but you have a part of fortune in um, Gemini So okay If you if that's what you love to do Your spirit loves to paint That's what you choose to do But you, you was born with a part of fortune in Gemini So it might be a little confusing right Say you a Sagittarius son Or yeah Sag Sagittarius son So it's a bit of a square You have to learn how to Or no it's an opposition So you have to learn through your expression right The way you like to act on things um, you're going to have to learn how to balance that with communicating more effectively. And let's say your Gemini is in, if you are a, uh, let's say your Gemini is in um, Capricorn. So, um, or yeah, Capricorn for the sake of this. Um, that's creating it in conjunction with the part of fortune you have. Uh, Capricorn, yeah, that's creating it in conjunction. So you know that, this might be get a little confusing too many too many placements and stuff like that but if y'all can follow um so you are a sad sun you a mercury in um capricorn and you're part of fortune gemini right and you're trying to be a painter so it's like 
through your actions, your experiences can give you the inspiration and creativity, right? That you can then put into your art, right? How you make your art expression something that matches with the part of fortune is all about communication and intellect. So maybe you can learn how to create conversations or stir up conversations, or you can get inspiration from conversations that you had that can, um, you know, or, or maybe you have a very creative way of describing your art that is able to create some kind of, you know, again, you can get as creative as you want with your life and your path. That's the whole thing. And that's what I was trying to get at in the beginning, speaking about this. You know, it's way more about your spirit and finding and, and creating a way for you to integrate these energies. Not so much, oh, I got this. I can't be a painter because I got my part of fortune in, in, in an air sign. Maybe I need to do music or something like that. But it's like, again, if you can find a way to integrate music with your art, you know, that might be an opportunity for you. A lot of other factors play in, but, you know, this is just to give you a simple idea of how to kind of look at your chart, how to understand your part of fortune or how you, you how you can utilize it. And again, if you have specific questions or even placements, like email me directly for placements and things of that nature. Or if you have a gen general question, leave that in the comments and then I can go into that and we can we can chop it up more about this because. You know, like I want to give examples, but I can't give examples for every type of scenario. You know, sometimes you got a specific placement. It's, it's easier to kind of talk about that one, you know. But again, I'm giving y'all just a raw so that y'all can utilize this for your own charts. And y'all don't, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can do this in your own room and figure it out for yourself. Because really, when you understand what every all the symbols mean in astrology, then you, you understand what the energy means. It's easy for you to come up with your own story. And that's what we're all supposed to do. We got to create our own dialogue, <coughs> our own relationship with God, a.k.a. our own way to interpret stars based upon who we are in our truth and the spirits and beings that we associate with. You know what I'm saying? So, <coughs> but getting back to... um explaining the part of fortune so let me let me just got, kind of go down to different signs so if you have a part of fortune in aries it's going to be something again worldly success the way you got to go about the thing that you do the thing that you love you have to do it in some kind of um independent way you got to do it on your own you have to um be an inspiration in that area you have to express yourself um kind of like in a, in a certain way where again you're not afraid to be first um uh, you know, with intention, that's the best way you can go about um, your part of fortune. If you have part of fortune in Taurus, you need to be uh, whatever it is. You need to stay down and stay locked in on what makes the most sense. Um, you need to make comfortable movements that are practical and slow. You need to take your time with success. You might not get success real fast. Anything overnight sound a little too good to be true. Probably should restrain from stick to your plan and stay fixated on that. Um, yeah, Aries also Aries part of fortune. Your success is gonna come from you taking risks. So that's that's the big thing. Again, also deals with slight again, I don't like to look at luck and be like, oh, this sign gonna give you luck. But it's you know, again, you might strike gold more than another person with a different part of fortune. So you know, okay, if this is the energy I need to strike gold, I'm gonna have to take a little more risks. But you know, don't gotta be ignorant. It doesn't have to be reckless, but you know, something to consider. Um, part of fortune in Gemini is going to come from communicating uh, in a mass sense, like being able to communicate to different individuals and also to convey your ideas in many different kinds of ways. Some form of communication is going to be needed. Um, you know, uh, and also, dang, I wish I did this a little before, but to, to, to link um, what the analogy I was saying, I was using the example I was using. So, Let's say, so based upon your house lord, right? Because that's what I was saying. You're part of Fortune House Lord. You want to utilize that energy to kind of get back to, 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 to help you get to what you was doing. So my part of Fortune, uh, again, uh, the, the house lord of that energy is in my third house. So I kind of lucked up in a way because it deals with communication. So my surroundings and what I am comfortable doing, um, what I'm more familiar with doing, if I'm communicating effectively there and then it's an Aquarius. So if I'm doing that in a unique way, then chances are I'm able to access my part of fortune, which is in Gemini and like my eighth house. Right. And also understanding the plate, the house placements of your part of fortune. We'll talk about that after, um, 
after I go down the in the uh, actual energy. So I'm at Gemini. So forms of communication. Um, let's go to Cancer. So you know that. For you to get worldly success, it's got to come from, first of all, your comfortability. It needs to be in a space or amongst something that you're comfortable with. And also, it needs to be something that is a vibe set by you, um, whether it's you in the home, something to do with being at home, something to do with being private, um, something to, something where you don't have to feel vulnerable all the time when you're doing it. But you can choose to be vulnerable and share pieces of you Um Part of that is part of that part of fortune, putting your heart into something, um, being able to care about stuff. Um, people, you know, not so much people caring about you, but you knowing how to care for others or you knowing how to care for whatever thing it is that you do. You putting your care into it is going to be prosperous for you. Leo expression. You're going to have to get on that stage. You're going to also have to find a way to make it something that is actually entertaining and that other people enjoy. Um but it's, it comes from you being, um, again, expressive with whatever it is that you love to do. It comes from you um, being able to be confident in that area and understanding what gains attention in that area and what doesn't gain the right attention in that area. Um, when it comes to Virgo, it's, it needs to be something that makes sense. Um, you know, you might worry about success a little too much, you know, worry a little bit just enough to get up off your ass and put things into place but don't stress yourself to the point where you create exhaustion you know where you are um you know uh, too critical about your own talents and things of that nature you might even have a talent in criticizing others though you might have a criticism that helps other people get their shit together so consider that as well you know you might be able to do that because it comes from again like i said with earth understanding functionality so if you can understand others functionality because it's a mutable sign so it's about others so you might be again the acts of service might actually get you in a good position um, if you could find a way to take your talent and make it something that act of service to other people if you can find you take what you love to do and turn it into something that is involved in criticizing other people who do what you love to do you know what i'm saying again that can go too far in a negative end but if you use the energy right Again, you might strike gold quicker than somebody else with a different setup. Uh, Libra, your part of fortune being in Libra is going to mean your success comes from your collaboration or ability to collaborate and associate with others. Um, it's going to come from your ability to communicate unique ideas and your ability to understand other people's ideas and put ideas together, you know, in a very cardinal sense. It's, it's about you taking control and creating balance. Um, so whatever you love to do, if you could find a way to create it, uh, to beautify it, make it something that's like beautiful and make it something that uh, is um, pleasant, harmonious, create harmonies with it, um, you know, bring people together with it. Also collaborate with it. If it's, you know, whatever you love to do, if you can find ways to collaborate, that's going to be cool, too. So ways to have partnerships or even if whatever content like for whatever you love to do, if you can create it in a way to help people with relationships or to show how good your relationship is or how, you know, lessons from your relationships that didn't that didn't work out and failed. If you can teach people through that, you know. That's going to be beneficial for you. Eighth house, um, your fortune is going to come from things behind the scenes. So you need to also consider your vices. Some of your vices or things that people don't know about uh, could be on your aura and can keep you from success or get you to, to success more quickly. Also, it's other people's resources. So being somebody who deals with other people's stuff other people's resources um again you you're able again your 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 fortune comes from being somewhat manipulative but again you don't get blood on your hands that's on you you know there's, there's ways to go about it that's not so malicious so it's not about trying to do people dirty but it's saying that hey your fortune is going to come from your ability to know what other people have and know how to exchange it either from what you have or utilize your your mind and your feelings to to create situation situ it's almost like management type energy you know what i'm saying where it's like you're not the one with the talent but your talent your or i don't say that your your talent is not expressing yourself your talent is knowing how somebody else should express themselves or knowing how somebody else should spend their time or should invest themselves you know because eighth house is really about investment so knowing what to invest your time into and knowing how other people should invest their time and that's like the idea of management and 
controlling something behind the scenes you know what i'm saying you you let them know and remind them where the direction is supposed to be at no 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 you you know you are artist you need to be here at this time you know what i'm saying and some of that gets into capricorn type energy but again it starts in scorpio like that that whole looking behind the scenes and understanding again you connected to a person another individual's passion and what they have inside and you're able to again it's, it's a different type of energy um I could spend all day talking about it, but, um, yeah, oh, I said eighth house, I'm in Scorpio, man, I'm in Scorpio, but still behind the scenes energy, um, you know, um, being fixated on your own goals as well, uh, and how you feel about your own, you know, so whatever you love to do, being, um, being passionate deeply about it and finding a way to connect with others deeply and for other people to feel it you know that's what's going to get you success um but also managing other people's uh situations and money and uh things of that nature could also uh benefit you as well um Sagittarius so with, with part of fortune is Sagittarius is going to come from you traveling whether within the mind creating new ideas going new places allowing your mind to be free and experiencing new type of things or it's or or actually traveling getting up and going somewhere new even if it's down the block like just seeing something new changing your routes up you know what I'm saying you might stumble into something whatever you love to do be willing to expand and explore and also incorporate your wisdom and knowledge into that lessons that you went through experiences you had find ways to integrate that into your message um whatever you do you know whatever you love to do find a way to integrate some wisdom and knowledge and teach somebody something um uh, tenth house, uh, not tenth house, Capricorn. So if you got part of fortune in Capricorn, it's a situation where you want to, um, whatever it is that you love to do, find a way to structure it and make it make sense and make it profitable. Also, learn how to gather resources. They might not be your resources, but learn how to also delegate. You know, get delegate things. So whatever it is that you have that you love to do. If you have other people around you who can be useful, don't just use them as a person, but find, you know, again, if they a person who wants to be used, um, don't be afraid to put them in, involve them in your plans and structure it in a way where it makes sense for them to, you know, play a role. Also, you have to be willing to be used. So know how to apply yourself and know how to be um, someone who can contribute to another person's plan as well, you know, but don't stay in that space, you know, Capricorn, at some point you want to be the boss. So, you know, again, or you, you should be some guy, somebody at least uh, allocating resources. So in a position where you don't have to do all the dirty work, but you can assign other people to do it. And you know, the game plan, you done created a, a way, a system, you know, so be a system creator, be systematic when you put whatever it is that you love to do, be systematic about it. Figure out what step, what step, and then create a way for you to be able to reproduce that. Um, Aquarius, um, and your part of fortune is going to come from you being an individual. You know what I'm saying? So whatever it is that you love to do, find a unique way to go about it and don't budge on it. Um, and also network well. Um, people that you network being in the public arena, but in spaces that are dealing with people who have ideas similar to you or who you or who are unique in whatever they do. That's where your success is going to come from. So whatever you love to do, be unique with it and also associate with other people who do it in a unique way, too. Uh, and if last but not least, Pisces, um, if you have your partner, fortune in Pisces, what you want to do is in order for you, whatever it is that you love to do, you want to find a way to make it uh, dreamy, make it co connective, make it imaginary, make it as creative as possible. And, and again, get delusional with it. And that's going to help again that that creativity that you come up with that's going to if it you know you want to make it something that can connect to other people so if people feel it it's going to it's going to go far you know what i'm saying it's going to go far so sometimes depending on what planets you have and what areas you know you might have to you know find your way with it for it to work in your favor but you know again we know we understand the language of god like so we understand okay if it's a square, I just got to learn something about it. If it's an opposition, I have to create balance if and not go too far on one end. If it's a uh, in conjunction, it's a misunderstanding that I, that can be corrected. If it's a conjunction, it's my power. And I have to be very responsible and take accountability for how I express and deal with these energies. If you know. And so when we talk about importance, 
Um, okay, I'm gonna go through houses real quick, and then we're gonna talk about importance. So through houses, uh, first house is gonna deal with your personal situation, your personal issues. So uh, you know you can find success by talking about personal things or by um, you know things you went through personally, people in your personal life, and 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 you know connecting with them that might actually be where your fortune is something that deals with you the better you know yourself the better you're able to put yourself in a position um second house something that you value or what other people value in you uh yeah so what you have to offer to the world in a sense so uh second house part of fortune is going to come in, in something that you you are considering as a gift and talent but you have to plant the seed for it and you have to be willing to water it um, knowing how to water that seed, knowing how to maintain that space and make it make sense in your life and stay consistent with it. Um, third house is going to be, you know, part of fortune is going to come from something that you're familiar with and your ability to communicate about it, analyze it. And um, it's going to be something close, you know, something close to you, proximity type shit. Um, you know, it's, you ain't got to go too far for it. You know, it might be even within a, you know, a friendship or something like that. Um, fourth house is going to be something private, maybe something at home, some skill that you can do at home or within the comfort of your own zone. You know, wherever you're at, you can create a situation where nobody really know too much, but you have just enough space and wiggle room to do what you need to do to be successful. Um, if it's in the fifth house, it's going to deal with something you're entertained by or something that entertains you or something that, you know, a stage you create. So you're going to have to create a stage for it. You're going to have to make it part of your creativity, um, part of your persona in a sense, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, sixth house is going to be something that you have to work on. You know, you have to work on it. You have to criticize it. Um, you're going to have to think about it, analyze it. You might worry about it too much, but that that's good that you know that's gonna be all right um seventh house is something that you might consider doing with others or within a relationship a partnership that you create with another individual or just a way in which it you know it's harmonious and able to be relatable to many different other individuals um eighth house uh, like i was saying behind the scenes type things things dealing with the exchange of resources or um you know other people's stuff or investigating, getting to the bottom of things, you know, whether it's you getting to the bottom of what it is that you love and going deep and learning all you can about it, or it's, um, you know, something else, you know what I'm saying? Part of that, that's actually a good example for it. Um, you diving deep into whatever it is that you love to do, um, or something involving, you know, what I just said, you know, exchange of resources. Then, um, ninth house so it's going to be mean success is going to come from you actually learning going through experiences that have to deal with what it is that you love to do you know what i'm saying doing experiences going through it learning from it and actually making wiser decisions next time you involve yourself in those spaces um 10th house is going to be something that deals with your status how you're seen um you know you can make a basically you can get success based upon how you position your status how you position yourself and how you utilize your resources. So be mindful of how you kind of construct things. T uh, tenth house. Um, tenth house is going to be situation. Oh, I said tenth house. Um, eleventh is going to be how you associate yourself or from your association. So whatever you love to do, how you associate with it. And then twelfth house, something to deal with your dreams and your ability to be imaginative, expansive, and creative. So, yeah, now we're going to talk about significance. And um, so is it as important as your North Node? I don't really, I say nah, not really. Because your North Node is tied to your spiritual path, which is going to give you a direction for, you know, the energies you're going to have to get with for your next life. We're talking about part of fortune. We're talking about shit that's going to occur in this life, like worldly success. Um, but it's a skill that you can take and utilize to get you closer to your North Node. Dep again, don't look at astrology like, well, I have a part of fortune in Gemini and the North Node is Scorpio. So they in conjunct, they don't really, it's like be creative because the way you think uh, and, and what you think about and how you choose to analyze certain things can help you become a, a, a 
deeper with your own emotions and then you can utilize that knowledge or that information to drive you further into your north node you got to be willing to be creative with your own chart and see where the connections can be made because again these are just signs and symbols and we chose a, a position but all of this shit affects us so you know again it's not just what you read and oh this is bad this is good a square is bad a, a trine is good it's like no sit there and really look at the energies involving themselves why is it good you know that's when you really get to real astrology or you know you're listening to a real astrologer when you're like oh this is why this could work or this is why these energies go together this is why you might be feeling like this this is why this energy might be hitting like this so when you're thinking about your you know again getting back to the, the point you know what's more you know what's more important don't get so caught up into what's more important look at it like it's all important depending on what i'm trying to do so if you are on your spiritual path that's your spiritual path part of fortune is some shit in the world so understand okay if i'm having three experiences right a spiritual experience i'm having that first so that needs to be my overarching goal in life my purpose my meaning it's like that needs to be the overarching thing making sure my spirit is intact connecting to myself on that level connecting to my you know what I'm saying connecting to myself connecting to god my spirit connecting on that level needs to be first so your spiritual path is what it is whatever energy that is that's what you're going to have to get familiar with in this life regardless it's going to be the most uncomfortable energy you got to kind of get with right um then of course you know you got your main three planets your moon sign who you really are and where you came from your memory your comfort zones how you express yourself is the sun you know uh your reactions is the moon how you express yourself is the sun what you're seeing how you see yourself and how you choose to paint the picture how you choose to go about the actions and then uh your your um your rising sign your personality throughout it all your north node is the spiritual path so it's like all these different connections you know it's not about which one is necessarily more important but it's about just considering what everything does part of fortune it could mean a lot to you at certain times but in other times it could mean not shit you only you dealing with a spiritual problem something that's dealing with you your desires and your ability to get up in the morning and fight towards your mission on those days you're not gonna care so much about your worldly success Some, sometimes though when you feeling like okay i got my spirituality together i feel stronger myself i'm doing what i love to do how do i go about it to get what i can out of this world so that i can set myself up to be more comfortable in the physical experience i'm having and maybe even help a little bit with certain things in the human experience i'm having relieve a little stress in the human experience allow me more time and ability to uh connect and and, and build on emotions and family and spend time with people i love sometimes we have to do things in the physical to get us to a space where we can do more in the human experience you know what i'm saying it's crazy how they got it and that just means getting a little more bread so you got a little more time to spin off you know getting a better job so you can plan a vacation for your family or you know again take a little time off or relieve the stress not have to worry about the bills so you have more time to love live and laugh you know what i'm saying it's like <laughs> you know say can't can't love live and laugh when you broke you know what i'm saying but you should be able to you know what i'm saying you should be able to you should be strong enough to again when you're going through the hardest times be able to smile and pick yourself back up you know what i'm saying but i'm just joking but uh yeah so that's what that's what i would say to that to that question about importance it's like nah it's more so just understanding what each one does and then being like okay yeah when i'm on my spiritual path this is what's going on this energy here and then also it's it's even more powerful just to understand the relationship between the two because now you can start to think about how to integrate them okay i got my north node in scorpio i got my part of fortune in gemini so what if through my journey of getting more deep with myself i chose those as topics i can communicate about and lighten it up a little bit in a gemini fashion to make it work for the world i could put those videos on youtube all of a sudden i got a million and one subscribers and i'm getting bread through you know what i'm saying how it work you know what i'm saying how it work how it could work and but don't look at it also as oh i'm just gonna get success overnight it's all a journey you start off a little dusty with that energy you know what i'm saying that's energy that, that might not be the easiest to grasp 
might be hella uncomfortable, but the more you get comfortable with it, boom, all of a sudden you find yourself getting success from it. And a lot of times the things that we are most nervous to do be the things that provide us the most success. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like a signal. Whenever you're scared to do something, but you know you love to do what you're doing, but you're scared to do a certain aspect of it. Like, you, you, you again, you're a painter, but you're scared to put your shit in galleries and museums or to submit it. That might be the very first thing you need to do, even if it is a shitty painting. Hey, I submit it, though. Let's try again next year. Let's try again next year. And then eventually... You find yourself in successful positions, but hey, I ain't knew one rich nigga that ain't take no risk. Shout out to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I never knew one rich nigga who ain't take no risk. It's real shit. It's like you gotta you gotta be out here, you gotta be present and you gotta do what it takes. Uh, otherwise, you know, you'll just be on the sideline and you might even become a hater, you know what I'm saying? Because you're looking at everybody else doing what you love to do and you knew you had the attributes, you knew you had the time, you knew you could, but you waited. And don't ever think you it's too late either. You know, sometimes times do pass, but all possibilities. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, you know, life is long. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people are oh, life is short. Life is short sometimes, but life is really long because it lasts for as long as you able to fight and put in. You know, and again, sometimes you know, people die early and shit like that. But what it is is. You know, you got to ask yourself what spaces were they in. You know, sometimes they, they, they did all they needed to do and there was nothing else for them to do. Sometimes the way they was going about doing it, it led them to a situation where, again, they just got their body snatched. It's tough to think about this, you know, what I'm saying depending on your own personal sensitivities and what you're going through, because, again, some people ain't trying to hear that. And I understand but it's real shit, you know, so like, but life is long, meaning while you here, just do the shit that you love to do and figure out a way to balance it. Cause there's going to be a lot of shit you don't like to do, but find some kind of balance where you can learn how to tip the scale to where you find yourself doing a lot more of what you love to do versus what you don't love to do. Uh, I believe that's everything on that list. I think that was everything in that question. I hope it was, but anyway, that's part of fortune a little bit of oh uh importancy of planets as well so you again moon sign versus pluto sign look pluto is generational so it's impactful but as far as your personal life and what's going on on the day to day it might not show up as such a deep um it might not show up as that influential or that imp- impactful unless it is conjunct with your personal planets. So in a lot of ways, your personal planets are important in their own right because they're your experience that you're having, your closest connection for you to understand the bigger context. The outer planets be like bigger context. But if the outer planets conjunct or sextile or uh, you know align with your inner planets, they become those become actions you need to take so they become a little more important but there's still a generational aspect to them and what i mean by that is you got moon sextile and pluto it's like on a generational sense that's what is going to happen with the generation but on your day to day your feelings are going to be something that transform you know they're going to deal with fear and that pluto aspect and power and control those are going to be things on your heart things that you're going to have to learn how to balance within your own life mars um you're going to have to learn how to transform your passions and that's going to be something you have to do but you know so again you just got to know what the plan is do is it, when it comes to importance it's like they all going to affect you you know what i'm saying outer planets though if they don't got no connection to your inner planets they're generational they're things that you're not gonna experience or understand till probably years down the line because you're still experiencing you know when it comes to an outer planet you're in the process of learning what it means so you, again for instance I'm, tw- I'm 27 right now i look back to when i was 10 from the time i was 10 to now i'm 27 i have better insight on what my generation is dealing with than when i was 10 years old so and now that again i'm 27 so i'm gonna have a better idea of what my generation went through by the time i'm 47 you know what i'm saying so it's like it's a that's what it means by like out of planets being not so impactful but they, again depending on what you're doing in this life 
it can be important because say you are trying to change the world or you're trying to be any kind of celebrity, you're trying to do things above and beyond, you should understand how this shit is shifting. Even if you're a day-to-day person, like you should understand how the generation is shifting because, again, you have kids, their Plutos and their Neptunes and their uh, Uranus is going to be in different places. And it would benefit you to understand what they might be dealing with throughout their uh, generation. And you could prepare them in certain ways that, you might not be able to had you not known. So, you know, outer, outer planets got their significance. But as far as our day-to-day life and shit like that, it's like, I, overall, my answer in general is just, you got to know what it is and how to deal. Like, you got to just know what it is. Once you know what it is, you can figure out how to integrate it in your life. And you can determine how important it is for you, depending on what you doing. That's what I would say. So, anyway, much love, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.